their watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and years. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, your secret sins in the light of your countenance. From all our days pass away under your wrath, our years come to an end with a sigh. The day of our life are seventy years, or perhaps eighty if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and control. They are soon gone and we fly away. The word of the Lord. Certainly 
essential to uh, humanity. Uh, but the Bible doesn't talk that way. I mean, there's some great stories of falling in love in the Bible. Uh, but the Bible doesn't emphasize the falling in love. I mean, there are some, there are some stories. Um, falling in love is a great thing. I'm not, I'm not uh, against falling in love. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's, a, it's kind of like going on a performance enhancing drugs of emotions. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, there's, a, there's a story in the Bible of a man named Jacob, some of you know this, and he was madly in love with a woman named Rachel. Um, and Rachel's dad, Laban, said that Jacob would have to work for him for seven years before he would allow him to marry his a daughter. And uh, uh, turns out that he ended up giving uh, Jacob his other daughter, Leah. But that's another story. Um, but uh, Jacob agreed to this. Jacob agreed that he would work seven years. And, and so it says in the Bible, so Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Isn't that great? Those seven years seemed only a few days to him because of his love for her. So uh, how many of you guys have had a love like that? Yeah, you know, you better raise your hand. Uh, I can't believe you didn't raise your hand uh, on, on that one. Uh, raise your hand, guys, for crying out loud. How, let me ask you again, how many of you have had a love like this? That, all right, there we go. Doesn't cost you anything to raise your hand. We're working with the remedial group, I guess. You uh, husbands uh, today. Well, uh, so the Bible has these great stories of love, but the Bible isn't so much interested in falling in love. You know what the Bible is interested in? The Bible is interested in how we grow in love. That's what the Bible speaks about most. And, and so this line, that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to become more loving persons. We're trying to become more loving tomorrow than what we are today. And so we're working uh, with this Shema, and we're reciting it every day. So let's recite it again. It's on the screen. Let's recite it again as, as a people of faith. Uh, let's go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. So that's what we're about. We're about growing in, in love. Um, we grow in love because we want to practice this Shema, this great commandment. And I, and I think it's interesting. The Apostle Paul says to a group of people uh, in Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, he says, therefore be imitators of God. God is love, right? So he says, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So be imitators, follow God's example of love, Scripture says. God is love, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us. Uh, we love because Christ first loved us and he gave himself up as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. And then it goes on to say, Paul goes on to say uh, to the church in Ephesus, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. How many of you want to be wise? There we go, we all want to be wise. How are we wise, Paul says? We make the most of the time. We make the most of the time. So we're going through this book. You know, if you didn't pick up your book, you're only 21 days behind. You can still catch up with us. Uh, 40 days living the Jesus Creed. But two weeks ago, we talked about what we talked about, offering a word of encouragement to somebody, right? Each day of the week. To say something nice. To say something sincere. You know, and maybe, you, maybe that was really easy for you. Maybe that was kind of more of a stretch for you. Last week we worked on what? Any of you that were here? Some of you were here. What did we work on this past week? 
service, right? Serving others, because uh, if we want to show this kind of love, we want we want to be able to show it by serving others, because love love serves. Um, this and maybe some of you that was easy for you. Maybe for some of you that was uh, maybe that was a little stretch uh, for you. But we, we just don't do these things uh, to grow in love, and we don't just take them for a week and then we're stop you know, we stop saying encouraging and affirming things to one another. We can keep on doing that. We can keep on doing acts of service because that's really how we grow. How we grow in love. In fact, after services last uh, Sunday, this was just a delight. I got a little note. Uh, a girl, a uh, little girl, uh, came up to me and she uh, she had colored a little picture uh, during church service and it said, "I love you," and it just kind of warmed my heart. You know, I mean, it was just a it was just a precious moment. You know, she shyly came up and handed it to me and then ran off. You know, and, uh, but uh, so just little acts. It doesn't have to be great. Little acts. So we're going through this. We're going through this book, and the one thing that came up, I think, this week, um, and the one thing that there we go. The one thing that came up uh, this week was uh, to make the most of our time, and so that's what we're focusing on: time uh, that we that we spend quality time. That's what we show uh, the ones that we love the most, that we care deeply about them. Right? We spend time with them. We spend quality time. So that's our goal for, for this week, is just simply time. And I think it's the biggest challenge of our day. Just letting you know that I love you by spending time with you uh, can be a very powerful thing. And I think it's the biggest challenge for all of us in our time, especially today, is to know how to spend genuine time with each other. Um, and it's not just any time, it's quality time, right? That's, uh, that's, that's the key there, quality time. By quality time, we mean giving someone your undivided presence, your whole self, your undivided attention. That's what quality time is. And I think the master of expressing this kind of love through time and attention, of course, is Jesus. He did this all, he did this all the time as a matter of historical record. You just go through the Gospels, his ability to be fully present with people and give them the gift of remarkably focused attention runs through all of the Gospels. There is a woman at a well in Samaria. Jesus' disciples were quite convinced that Jesus would not want Jesus to spend any time with her. She was the wrong gender, she was the wrong ethnicity, she was the wrong religion, yet Jesus does spend time with her. In fact, we have the, the longest conversation recorded in the Gospels between Jesus and the woman of Samaria, the woman at the well. It's the longest conversation that Jesus had with anyone. Why? Because Jesus wanted to spend time with her. The people were bringing children to Jesus. <coughs> And Jesus' closest friends, they said, uh, no, you, can, you, can't do that. you can't bring the children to Jesus. He doesn't have time. You know, they were the lowest on the, the totem pole of status. Um, they don't bring children to Jesus. He doesn't have time for that. But Jesus said to the disciples, let the children come to me, right? Let the children come to me. For such as these is the kingdom of God. I have time for them. Bring the children to me. And then there's a story about a crooked tax collector. Are any of you thinking about taxes? Maybe about, about this time. There was a crooked tax collector that nobody really had time for. Nobody liked. His name was Zacchaeus. Do you remember Zacchaeus? He was up in a tree, right? He was up in a tree. And nobody thought that Jesus would ever have time for somebody like a crooked tax collector. But do you remember what Jesus did? He came now, come down, because I want to spend time with you. I want to go to your house. I want to, I want to eat with you. I want, to, I want to meet your family. So Jesus always seemed to have time for others. And I think the main place we learn about this, the main relationships where we learn from Jesus how to master the gift of quality time is that little circle of friends that was closest to Jesus, the ones that uh, became known as the disciples. 
disciples or the apostles, and there were 12 of them. And that really was Jesus' first family, right? And this really uh, was and is the church family. And so Jesus went up on the mountain and he called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him, and he appointed 12 whom he also called the apostles. And we probably would miss this if we weren't paying attention, but there's four little words to be with him. That's why he called this family, the church, to be with him. It's as simple as that. We, we probably would have not even noticed that just reading through scriptures. But the reason Jesus appointed the twelve and appointed you and me to be with us, right? To be with us. And then to be sent out to proclaim the message, St. Mark says in chapter 3. So this week, our goal is to make our top relationships the top priority of our time this week. And that means getting really honest about your key relationships and where your time is really going. And this may well mean this week that you ask some folks in your most important relationships, are you getting enough of my time? It's just to be honest with them and to ask them. Are you getting enough of my time? And I know that's a scary question to ask for a lot of us. I know that. And I face this all the time. And why do I face this all the time? It's because there's not enough time in the day to get everything that you need to get done. Right? Are, are you with me on this? There's not enough time. There's just not enough. There is not enough time in your day to satisfy the demands that are placed on you by your work, or by your friends, or by your family. There is not enough time in your day to satisfy the demands that are placed on you for your own success, or maybe even for your own financial needs. And I know that there is always more phone calls to be returned, there's always more emails to be answered, more stuff to be done, more projects to be finished, more laundry to do, more dishes to be done. I mean, there's always all of this stuff that is just crashing in upon us. But I don't know, uh, you know, just think about those who are around you. Maybe think about your kids. Rarely do your kids say, hey, mom and dad, you know what, you spend enough time with me now today. Why don't you go to work and, and accomplish something there? I mean, we just don't hear that. Or at work, we don't hear, you know what, you've done enough for today. Now, you know, um, why don't you just go home and spend some time with your family? Why don't you, you know, do something with your loved ones? We don't hear that, do we? We don't hear that. So when it comes to time, it's true. You're going to disappoint someone, right? You are going to disappoint somebody. Don't make it be the people that you want to love the most. Don't disappoint them. Don't ever disappoint them. Don't make it them. You're going to disappoint somebody. Don't make it the ones that you want to love the most. And this doesn't have to be difficult. You know, spend quality time with each other. Take a walk with each other. Just take a walk with one another. When Jesus called his first disciples, they went walking with the, you know, the Gospels. Say. At the end of Jesus' life, after the resurrection, he goes on a seven-mile walk to Emmaus with a, with a couple of disciples. So taking a walk is simple, right? It, it's very low cost. It's very low skill. I imagine that most of you know that skill. Most of you, I think, in this room can walk. So um, you can do that with anything. But the thing about a walk is that it's, it's, it's quality time, right? It's good connection time. So think about that. In fact, the disciples often talked about discipleship as just walking with Jesus. To love Jesus meant that you were walking with Jesus. So here's your question for this week. Does somebody that you love, do you want to go on a walk? It might be a great day to do that today, right? You want to go on a walk with me? It's so simple as, as that. And here's another. How about just eating together? 
having a meal. You know, that's something that Jesus loved to do. I mean, there are all types of stories about Jesus eating with, with other types of people. In fact, he got in a lot of trouble, didn't he? Because he ate with people in the gospel. So, again, just eat with one another. Low skill. Well, you got to have somebody to cook, I guess, but that's some skill. But relatively low cost, right? Just spending quality, quality time. One important note, uh, Jesus, when he ate with others, he usually did this without having the television on. All right? That's not in the Bible. Jesus did turn on the television when he was eating with, with others. I, I think we just got to uh, look at that. Um, you know, uh, quality time is not eating with the TV on. It's not having screen time. We, we focus a lot of our time with screen time. I mean, like, look, we got to be even at screens in church. We have uh, screens on our, our cell phones. Uh, the quality time eating is not screen time. This is screen time. So is quality time, people, uh, checking your uh, Facebook uh, account? Is quality time checking your texts? Is quality time emailing others while you eat? Is that quality time? No, that is not quality time, right? I mean, uh, screens are wonderful, but there needs to be a limit to our screen time, especially when we want to spend quality time with one another. Are you with me on this? I, I, some of you are looking kind of nervous right now. This is not quality time, right? Quality time is putting this away. Screens were made for mankind. Mankind was not made for screens. I think it's important that we realize that. So sometimes, in you know, order to have quality time, you got to put these things down. Sometimes you got to turn off the screens. Sometimes you got to turn off the television. So can you do that this week? Can you turn off your screens this week in order to spend quality time with each other? Because that's our goal this week. In conclusion, let's just go back to the psalmist that Marlis, the psalm reading that Marlis read. The psalmist said this uh, uh, thousands of years ago, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, the river had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now listen to what the psalm says next. I gotta get to this because I don't remember. Our years come to an end like a sigh. Time goes by so fast. The psalmist is telling us the days of our life are like 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. If you've ever lost a loved one, you could be with that loved one for 60, 70, 80 years and guess what? It's not enough time to be with them. They are soon gone and we fly away, the psalmist says. Think of this wisdom. And this is written thousands of years ago. So the psalmist says, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Teach us to count our days so that we might have a wise heart. The best use of this day that you are given, given is to love others. And the best day to love others is just to spend time with the ones that you love. Because that's all we have. That's all we have is today. It goes by so fast. So teach us to number our days, oh Lord. Teach us to number our days. You can love. You can stop. You can pay attention. You can spend quality time with those that you love. You can notice. You can care. And Jesus will actually do this with you. Jesus will be present when you spend quality time with those people that you love the most in this life. So do this this week. Spend quality time and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about, see how it went when we come back next week. Let's stand and